hey, it's Darius. And once you start using I-75 CPA review, you're going to be looking forward to score release day as much as I do. So congratulations to all those I-75ers who recently passed the CPA exam. If you didn't pass, don't get mad. You might just need to get on a better road. So get yourself on I-75 because the right teacher makes all the difference. SQL queries are likely to be tested. And in this video, we're going to look at aggregate functions because the exam will expect you to know how aggregate functions are used in a SQL query. Aggregate functions are math terms such as sum, S-U-M, average, count, max, and min. Let's start with the count function. The count function allows us to know how many transactions we have that fit our criteria. So let's say this is our order details table. So customers have placed orders and here they all are in this table and we can scroll down past order number 126 because there's thousands and thousands of orders in a typical database. But what if we want to know the total count? How many orders were placed? So after select, we'll put in our aggregate function count because we want to know a count of all the sales orders from the order details table. How many sales orders were there? So we query using the aggregate function count and we find out that there were 2,155 total transactions. So the aggregate function count allowed us to know how many transactions we have that fit our criteria. But what if we wanted to know how many transactions involved a particular product, like product 10? So we don't want the total transactions, we want just the total transactions of product 10. So we'd have to query the product order details table a little differently. We'll use select and we'll still use the aggregate function count, but we're going to need a filter now. We're going to need where because now we want to put in a condition. We only want to know the total transactions that involve product ID number 10. So we write select count star because we want all of the transactions from the order details table where product ID equals 10 and this is what we'll return right here. Notice the only transactions that came back as a result of our search were those that matched product ID number 10 and there were 33 of them according to our count. If we were able to scroll this table all the way down we would see all 33 of the transactions that involve product ID number 10. So we use the count function to determine how many transactions involved product ID 10. But what if we want to know how many product ID 10s were sold this year? We sold more than 33, right? There were 33 separate transactions where someone ordered product 10. But what was the total number of product 10s that went out the door in those 33 orders? Count won't help us with that. Instead, that's where SUM, S-U-M, comes in. S-U-M is also an aggregate function. And if we want to know the total quantity of product 10 that was sold in those 33 different transactions, after the SELECT clause, then we type SUM, S-U-M. SELECT, S-U-M, quantity column from the order details table, where the product ID equals 10, and down here you can see the results of our query, that 742 total product 10s were sold. And that's what we would do if we added up manually the quantity column of those 33 orders of product 10. Let's go back to the count function where we determined that there were 33 orders that involved product 10. But not every customer ordered one. Here's an order of 24 product 10s. Here's an order of 15. What if we wanted to know the average order of product 10? AVG is another aggregate function. If the goal is to know the average order size of product 10, then we will write the query this way. Select average instead of sum or instead of count. Select AVG quantity column from order details table where product ID equals 10 
and you can see that the average order size of product 10, 22.48. What if we wanted to know the maximum order size of product 10? Well, max is an aggregate function also. So our query would be select max quantity column from order details table where product ID equals 10. And when we query, the result is that the maximum order size of product 10 was 100. The largest order placed in quantity terms for product 10 was 100 product 10s. Somebody bought 100 product 10s in one particular order. That was the maximum order size. What if we wanted to know the smallest order size of product 10? Well, min, M-I-N, is also an aggregate function. So if we want to know the smallest order that we had for product ID 10, we write the query this way. Select min from the quantity column, the order details table, where product ID equals 10. And not surprisingly, the minimum order was 1. So the minimum order size was 1, but the average order size we determined to be 22. And we did all this using aggregate functions. And I can see them asking you about this on the exam. And how would the questions look? Could be something like this in SQL. Which of the following are not aggregate functions? A, sum, S-U-M, that is. Count, that's an aggregate function. Both of these or neither. Well, it's asking you which are not aggregate functions. And since sum, S-U-M, and count are both aggregate functions, we're going to pick neither, letter D. You might also see a question like this. If a hardware store wants to know how many six-foot ladders with product code ACG were sold, which of the following aggregate functions would be needed in the query? Is this a sum or a count? Do we need sum and count? Is the answer C? Or maybe D, neither? A is correct. Sum will tell us how many six-foot ladders with product code ACG were sold. Count will tell us how many different times sales transactions involved ACG ladders, but count won't tell us how many ACG ladders were sold. We need sum for that. So our statement should be select sum quantity column from order details table where product code equals ACG. And then let's not be lazy. Let's put in a semicolon because the exam is going to expect you to know that the statement ends with a semicolon. So if this is the end of our statement, semicolon belongs in there. How about this question? If a hardware store wants to know how many transactions included hammers with the product code RAM, which of the following aggregate functions would be needed in the query? So we want to know how many different transactions involve the RAM hammer. That's not a sum, is it? That's a count. We'll select count, all columns, from order details table, where product ID equals RAM. A is wrong. We would use sum to learn the total number of RAM hammers sold, not the number of transactions that involve the RAM hammer. C is wrong. We'll use average to learn the average number of RAM hammers sold in each transaction that we counted. And D is wrong. We'll use max to learn the max order size of RAM hammers. Max would be used if we wanted to know what's the largest quantity of RAM hammers sold in a single transaction. But here we only wanted to know how many sales transactions involve the RAM hammer. So that's going to include a count. Let's try this. In SQL, if a hardware store's goal is to determine the average order size of product 10, the aggregate function average, AVG, would be placed where in the statement? And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section. And remember to like and subscribe so that you'll be notified right away when another video drops. And if you need more help with SQL or any part of the CPA ISC exam, go to i75cpareview.com. Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. Subscribe now and you won't be impacted by any price increase. Hey, it's Darius. And so much effort and energy go into each I-75 video. But it's all worthwhile when you pass and notice the I-75 difference. Congratulations to everyone who passed the exam in 2024. 
Get yourself on I-75 because the right teacher makes all the difference. Another incredible score release here at I-75 CPA Review. So congratulations to Kevin for passing far, and what a nice score there in 88. And to all the I-75ers who let me know that they passed in April and May.